we're here on King Street. We're taking you guys along to eat some gourmet plate lunches. That will not break the bank for you guys. Which you guys should not sleep on, by the way. It's like chef-inspired specials. Make sure you stay tuned. We're taking you guys on a dessert adventure. You know, they say the more sour, the probably better for your health it is. This tastes real healthy. Sometimes it feels like I'm all alone. What's going on, Foodie Ohana? Welcome back to the channel. This leaves. <laughs> it wants you to stop filming. <laughs> Anyways, guys, today we have an awesome video for you. We're here on King Street. We're taking you guys along to eat some gourmet plate lunches. That will not break the bank for you guys. So you can still have some money left over in your wallet for dessert. You know that. And we got some awesome dessert. I'm so excited. I'm like jumping up and down. I'm so excited. So guys, make sure you stick around for the whole video and hit that subscribe button before we get into everything. Okay guys, hit the subscribe button, help us out, get our channel to 20K. We're about to hit 15, so. We can do it guys, together I know we can do it. Yeah, let's get going because we're starving. And guys, don't forget, like this video and let's get eating because we're hungry. Let's go, it's right there. Let's go. Sometimes you just don't care at all. Oh. And when I'm holding you, I'm where I wanna Oh, thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo! Oh, man, this smells amazing. So amazing. I could smell the prime rib already. Let's get to eating and it's so perfect that there's benches right outside here. So let's get to eating, guys. And there's... Sorry, guys, a little change of plans. So right when we are filming and I was walking toward the table we wanted to sit on, this random guy, he wasn't even eating. He just plopped on the bench and he was like lying there too. So I don't know. And coughing. Yeah, and coughing all over the bench and so <laughs> without a mask. So we're like, okay, you know, I mean, not Kahai Kitchen's fault, you know, it's just can't help it. You know, when there's open seating areas, random people just pop up out of nowhere and just decide to like make it their homes and such. But don't worry guys, we are heading to a park that's super close by, honestly. Yeah. You guys might know where we're heading, but we'll see you there. Like I said, we, like Amanda said, we found a park nearby. This is called the uh, Old Stadium Park. Is that right? Old Stadium Park, right across the street from Papa Kurt. So if you guys didn't catch that video, oh snap! Or oh, gourmet food overload. If you guys haven't catched that video, Papa Kurt's link up above. But yeah, it's right across the street. So if you want to try Kahai Street, like we are doing today, or Papa Kurt's, there's a park right across the street you can eat at. So we got a couple of things today. We got their daily specials which you guys should not sleep on, by the way. It's like chef-inspired specials. We got herb-crusted prime rib, garlic, scallion, opaka paka, and their daily menu item, chicken katsu poutine, guys. Poutine. Chicken katsu, how amazing is that? Set everything up so we can show you guys the gourmet plate lunches we got today. I, I don't think this is gonna work out for us today, guys. This, the fly fan, it's just too windy. But the flies are vicious today, the most vicious ever. Like I mentioned in our previous videos, these flies, they vary from district, I swear. Some of them are like relentless in certain areas. So, so like we mentioned, we got a bunch of gourmet plate lunches. And the first one we wanna start with is the fresh catch opaka paka daily special of the day. And it's not just any opaka paka, it's ginger scallion crusted opaka paka. And this looks amazing, guys. It smells amazing, it looks pretty, it looks gourmet. And don't forget, miso vinaigrette on top. Oh yeah, and that miso vinaigrette. Ooh. It's just like fork tender, just flakes off. It's very firm, yet tender at the same time. Cheers. Oh, oh. oh wow. Rip. She wasted the sca ginger scallion. 
Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. That fish is very light in flavor. Sorry, in flavor. Mm -hmm. wow. That ginger crusted texture on the exterior, it's not crispy, like crunchy texture. It's almost mm. like a light eggy batter texture almost. And mm -hmm. the ginger scallion goes so well with that sweet miso vinaigrette. Fish is so fresh too. Flaky tender, guys. You don't need a knife. Now fish is definitely a great vessel for that sauce. The fishy flavor is not strong at all. And the ginger scallion is not that strong. It's very mild, but yet flavorful. Mmm. Mm, really well. Like I mentioned, mm. Thai Kitchen, they started out as a catering company back in 2006 and they got so popular that they started selling food by like the daily plates. And the original location back in 2006 was in Kalihi. Now they're on Cool Ridge. Coolidge. Cool Ridge or Coolidge? Coolidge. <laughs> now they're on Coolidge Street off of King and Coolidge. That's their new location. They serve plate lunches. They still do catering if you guys order ahead. But definitely come here to try their gourmet plate lunches. I mean, fresh catch fish, prime ribs, specials, you know. Their menu is extensive, guys. They have like gourmet burgers as well. Like I saw like a pastrami charbroiled patty burger. I was so tempted to get that, but man, like, it's a little bit tired of burgers. So we're taking a little break. <laughs> Mixed plates. They have uh, fresh fish, they have pretty much everything. Meat, local favorites, man, everything. I saw online they, they did have a weekend brunch special, but I believe it's only like Saturday, Sunday. Actually, Saturday. I believe they're closed on Sunday. But it's Aloha Friday. No work till Monday. <laughs> Except I work on Sunday. Yeah, so it's Aloha Friday. So we got their Aloha Friday special, which was this. Ooh. Before we get into the prime rib, because I already know that's going to be amazing. I wanted to try something on their menu. I'm surprised I never tried before. This is their poutine chicken katsu. And guys, it looks amazing already. Panko crusted, crispy chicken katsu doused in that gravy. Mm. Dark brown gravy, melted cheese. Oh, man. You all know I'm a fan of gravy. It smells very strong and intense. Yeah. Ah, the flies are strong and intense. All cheers. Right, cheers before the fly takes the cheers away. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh. Nice fried katsu. Mm. Savory gravy. It still has the crunchiness to it, guys, even though it's covered in gravy. That is good. My only complaint would be that there's not enough gravy. I should have asked for gravy all over. What was I thinking, guys? Mm. That gravy is like a really nice brown gravy. Not too strong, mm. though. Oh my god, guys. Epic fail. We didn't even eat the mac. <laughs> Sorry, I've been. <laughs> I was too hungry to describe it, but the mac style is good too. It's a potato mac. It's a more tangy mac, like very mayo mm. but not like your cheap mac salad where it's just, you know, elbow macaroni, mayo. Mm. You can tell they seasoned this. And there's no celery in here, guys. There's some pepper, some carrots, very mayo -y. I just can't get over how, like, it retained its texture. I mean, I had a feeling already because when we came to pick it up, you know how like they have that the hot window where the food that is ready is set? These guys did it right at Kahai Kitchen. They left the plate open, you know what I mean? That's a big no-no when you come pay with your food and the plate's already closed. Closed plates equal soggy food. I uh, really appreciate that they left the plate open so that it can air out and still retain its crispiness. Oh man, that gravy is really good. Very flavorful gravy, but not heavy like Amanda was saying. And the gravy also, it just lightly coats everything. Not too heavy on the gravy which I'm kind of sad about because I actually love gravy. Mm, yeah, that's great. I'll put on anything. And the chicken, guys, isn't your average, like, flatten out chicken katsu where it's, like, paper thin and just mostly batter? Come on, guys, look at this. This is, like, a whole chicken thigh. It's, like, thick, guys. It's, like, she thick kind of chicken, you know what I mean? I will mention, they did market it as a poutine katsu, but the cheese flavor is not that strong. Honestly, it kind of just tastes like a chicken cutlet with gravy kind of deal. Oh shoot, yeah, where's the cheese? I see it, but it's very light. It's not too much. Oh man. So if you're not a cheesy person, then maybe, yeah, this would be really great for you, but we love our cheese. We love our cheese, so we could use a little bit more gravy and a little bit more cheese. Oh man, and of course, we got the prime rib. You know when we see prime rib at a gourmet plate lunch or any gourmet menu spot, you gotta get the prime rib. So this is their herb crusted prime rib with au jus. It said horseradish, but I don't see the horseradish, guys. Maybe it, yeah, they forgot to, it was on the side probably mm -hmm. and they forgot because the mashed potato, rustic mashed potatoes is on the side. And of course I got potato mac. You could choose, I think, 
between mixed veggies, corn, or tossed salad. We're trying to be healthy today. Just trying to enjoy ourselves. They do ask you for the doneness, so of course you gotta get medium rare. So my favorite piece is like that little corner with some fat herb crust on the side. Oh, right oh here. Oh my gosh. Look at this baby right here. Gelatinous goodie. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Man, it's not good. You know what this tastes like? It tastes like a Christmas day brunch. Christmas day brunch. That's mm. exactly what this mashed tastes potatoes like. good too. Rustic mashed potatoes. Very creamy. I can tell they use a lot of butter in here. This is like almost as good as my dad's one. Almost. Mm. My dad's one's still better. But this is not bad. Pretty good. I do wish that the, the au jus was on the side too though. Like we mentioned they do have daily specials. Check them out guys because every day is a different special. This is probably a only Friday only special because this is the first time I've seen it on their menu. Herb crusted prime rib. It's very simple seasoning. You can tell it's like rock salt, cracked pepper, rosemary. Mm. Maybe a little bit of thyme in there. But it's just enough to give it the fragrant like a mando singer reminds me of like christmas dinner you know and this prime rib is very tender they don't give you a really fat piece which i usually prefer a thinner cut piece of meat as you guys probably know but it's like in between like a thick piece and a thin piece it's not too thin not too thick the meat itself is very tender and you can tell that it was cooked really well like very properly like slow roasted some places they, they claim it's slow roasted but man that bad boy will be tough as heck this yeah, no kidding. It's cooked it's actually good. medium rare too. A lot of places we get, by the time we get it, it's like all grayed out, but this is, has still like that nice pinkness to it. I just wish there was more au jus or... I, I think they forgot it. I think they forgot it. I mean, it happens, guys. I'm pretty sure this should come with the side of au jus and horseradish. I mean, it said on the menu. You try mashed potato? Mashed potato. It's mashed potato. I like it. It's creamy. It is, but I mean, to be honest, how much better can a mashed potato get? You'd be surprised. Unless it's like cheese, garlic, mashed potatoes with like bacon all over it, then yeah. But it's a pretty basic one. All right, guys. A little fun fact. I'm fob. My family's fob. So we grew up with box mashed potatoes, right? <laughs> so to me, this is like really good. Yeah, actually, I think I was the first one to ever make mashed potatoes at your house. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely missing that au jus, though. I really wish that we had some au jus here. Yeah. It needs the jus, guys. It needs it. It's also missing a little bit oh, of like, sure. I feel like the herb crust needs to be a little bit stronger. But overall, the meat quality itself is really good. I think it would have been perfectly balanced with the jus because the jus normally makes it a little saltier. Ah. So I feel like if they over season the crust, sometimes it's overpowering. My only oh. complaint would be like a little more of everything at this place. Like everything is so flavorful. Everything tastes good. I just wish there was like more of it, you know, because it's that good, you know? Yeah. Like when I think of plate lunches, I think of like, man, like the box can barely close kind of deal. Well, the katsu plate was actually pretty stuffed. And guys, I feel like this, um, the pricing of this place is not break the bank. I mean, the prime rib is prime rib. It's going to be a little bit more, but their regular plates are actually not too expensive. They're on the reasonable side. Not cheap, but honestly, the food is really, really good mm -hmm. and high quality. These frat flies. <laughs> I was gonna say fries. Going back to what I was saying, I wish there was just a little more of everything. Like the opaka paka is nice, it's, it's fresh, you know, crust is like light, ginger scallion flavor is all there. It's just no, oh, there's only two medallions. Like I wish it was like three, maybe, you know. Maybe I'm asking a little too much. I'm a little too ambitious sometimes. Mm. I think my favorite today is this fish. Really? It's well, very I like the good. Katsu. The katsu is really good, but like I said, I wish for me, me personally, I wish it was doused with gravy. I know it's very controversial. You guys are going to be like, no, crispy. But you guys already know. I like soggy stuff. <laughs> more cheese, more gravy. Oh, this would be perfect. There was this uh, place I used to go to a lot that closed down, but I used to get a bed of fries, katsu, gravy, cheese all over. Oh man, so sad it closed. This is like the closest thing I got to it. Actually, the katsu itself is better than that place I'm mentioning now, but good quality. It feels like I got a prime rib at a high-end restaurant. I'm eating it at a park, got a takeout. Online, it didn't mention how big the prime rib was in ounces. If I had to guess, I'd say it was a 10 ounce cut. Let us know how you guys like your prime rib. Do you guys have like a go-to prime rib place? Oh, we go to a lot of places and get prime rib, but where's your guys' favorite? Let us know in the comments. So guys, while Felix is chowing down, wanna let you guys in on a little secret. So the next place that we're going to is pretty close by. It's also on King Street. And if you're local, you know 
we had to hit this place up. It's actually gonna be our first time there, but we've always passed by on King Street and we always wondered like what they had. So we're taking you guys today. So make sure you stay tuned. We're taking you guys on a dessert adventure. Stay tuned. And yes, I had coffee. <laughs> Excited. I had a, I see oh. it like, oh, that's fine. It's the recording. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Long awaited icy float. Amanda's been dying to get one of these. Oh, this is the actual icy straw. Oh, man. You know it's legit. When it has the scooper at the end of a red straw, <gasps> y'all know that. So, guys, my go to is usually. Blue vanilla and Coke. Very controversial. Not a lot of people like blue vanilla, but I personally love blue vanilla. If you guys live in town, particularly Kaimuki or Kapuhu area, you know the best ICs back in the day was always that crack seed store on Wailai or Coco Head Ave and also Rugen Market. Cause I used to stop by there and use my allowance money to get a Coke IC on those hot summer days. Oh, I have ice cream in mine too. So on this lovely, the overcast of a day. I got myself a Coke with ice cream, keeping it OG today. I originally wanted strawberry and lemon peel. That sounded good and ice cream, but then um, the strawberry portion was still defrosting. So, you know, let's just keep it classic. Why not? Mm. Mm. And guys, shout out to Ryan. It was actually his recommendation that we came here. His daughter actually owns the store and her, his daughter-in-law as well. So this place is called Honolulu Crackseed off of King Street down one of like the small aisles or small lanes. What is this even, lane called? Yeah, I don't even know what the lane is called. Yeah, if you're driving down King, you're going to see this big sign that says bait shop. Make a left right there down that private lane. And there's ample parking. It's kind of by... Um, J Shop. If you guys are familiar with the Japanese store J Shop, but guys, little haul of what we got. So this one was the honey kumquat. Yeah, that's interesting. Never had that before. This one is the lihang lychee. Never had that before. This one is lemon peel, the classic. If you're addicted like me to this, you eat it anytime. You like sour things. And then I got this um, pickled plum. I don't know, it looked really good. Kind of like that pickled ume thing in, in those like drinks, you know what I mean? And I got the unicorn poo. You guys know I had to get it. <laughs> Do they even know what unicorn poo is? I didn't. Unicorn poo. So it's the trolley bean? Trolley bean. Trolley eggs. Trolley egg with Lee Hing. The trolley dinosaur eggs, guys, with uh, Lee Hing and sauce and... Uh, so a taste yeah. test? Yeah, let's try a little bit of everything. Let's I mean, do it. We haven't had... The oh, poo. Yeah, guys, if you're um, not from here or wherever you're from doesn't have one of these crack seed stores, it's not a drug corner, okay? <laughs> that is a front for like these like preserved plums, but it's basically a snack shop. That's what it is. It's basically like a local snack shop that's Chinese inspired. So basically, you know, like at, in Chinatown, you see those big clear jars that have these pickled looking things. Well, basically it's pickled plum and an assortment of things. I mean, it's either going to be pickled or preserved. It's either going to be salty, sour, or sweet and salty, or sweet and sour. So very like delicious flavors, guys. If you guys haven't tried crack seed ever, I don't know crack seed is a good place to check out. I mean, they have a little bit of everything. Everyone there is nice, they're willing to 
help you out, you know, let you even try samples. I mean, some of the things like Amanda mentioned, we don't, we never even heard of or got, like the honey kumquat. They were nice enough to let us try a piece and now it's like Amanda's new favorite, go figure. But yeah, for us, going to a crack seed store is like literally a kid in a candy store. It's hard to stop us and, you know, Amanda had to pull me away. I want to just get a quarter pound of everything, but they did say we could get less than that, so everything's priced by weight. Okay, first off, unicorn poo poo. I gotta put my icy down, I might just keep drinking this. I don't know, it's addicting. Trolley egg with, I think, sour plum, Li Hang. Ooh, smells sour. Oh, anything with lemon peel, Ooh. I'm in. Nice mm. little dino eggs. Mmm, mmm, so good. Wow, it's really tangy and sweet. It really offsets the really sweetness of the trolley egg. The trolley eggs are typically really sweet, so with that little tang and sour. I don't believe these are the dinosaur eggs. Though. It doesn't have that crunchy coating on the outside. It does. It does? Or is it just like... It's just like kind of melted. Disintegrated. Yeah. I'm all the lemon mm. juice. Oh, yeah. that's a good thing. Okay. Mm. This is just begging for us to get cavities. That's oh, so man. good. I'm just going to make a little pocket opening. I gotta, you got to open up like kid style, you know? <laughs> if you y'all grew up, grew up biting the plastic bag, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, we're just like doing like an improv, like instead of like going somewhere, we're like, oh, we're just gonna try it yeah. already. <laughs> and then I don't know if we caught your name. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. Krista. Krista. Oh. Guys, shout out to Krista. She helped us. <laughs> she, she literally she helped us camera, pick but... up everything. <laughs> so. Oh. Okay. Give this video a thumbs up, guys. <laughs> Crystal worked hard to let us sample everything, and yeah, everything's so good so far. All right, well, I'm glad you guys are enjoying everything. Yep. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks again, Crystal. Bye. Yep. Nice to meet you. Oh, what were we trying? Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. Li Hang, uh, lychee. So, Krista did mention that this is like a really popular one. It's lychee that is coated in Li Hang Nui. Well, here we say lychee, but I guess the right way is supposed to be lychee. I don't know, but here we say lychee. But lychee, lychee, delicious. Tomato, tomato, same thing. Look at that, it's so good. Mm. 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 Crystal was making it, so it was someone's favorite and they had to stop them from eating it. If you guys like that sweet, sour. You're gonna get hit with the sweet and sour first from the leaking moi and then the afternote of the lychee after is like really good. It just has that sweet final mm -hmm. touches of lychee. It's really good. It kind of tastes like a dried mango, if you guys ever had, or like dried papaya, but with like that salty, sweet coating mm -hmm. of Li Hang. And then this one is the honey kumquat. So kumquat is like a mini little tangerine citrus fruit kind of thing. Oh man, that thing looks juicy. Mmm. You can see like the little on the inside. You see that? There. It's like a, you can see like the little inside of like a, like a mandarin orange looking. Try look. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, these are real fruits, guys. Mm. Oh man. That's just a burst of flavor. It's almost like a hint of spice too. Oh good. Like Chinese spices, right? Really. Yeah. These are real fruits now that are pickled and preserved. They have a very long shelf life. And you ain't gotta like, refrigerate most of them. And here in Hawaii, a lot of times with these like pickled plums and pickled fruit and pickled citruses, we usually put it in like tea. So if you ever go like a boba shop over here, we do have like different kinds of like teas that have these kind of stuff in it. You'll see on the menu, it'll say like Li Hang Mui green tea or something. It's usually like in more of the local boba spots here, but it'll usually have like this kind of like seeds or like lemon peel or, you know, like yeah, the seeds that we saw in the store, I'll put it right on the screen right here. Those seeds are usually in the tea. You only got three balls? I thought we got like five. I just wanted to try it. I don't know, I didn't know if it was gonna be good or not. Oh, oh this is scary. Ooh, pickled plum. <laughs> pickled plum. <laughs> Ooh. Oh man, that looks sour. I'm scared to try that. <laughs> I'm not gonna try it. You licked it. You licked the hell out of it. Very vinegary, guys. It's very strong, so you want to take like small bites. But after you get like the small bite and the vinegar kind of like goes to your throat, you want to keep eating it. But then you keep getting your your like sour face. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm good on sour faces today. Yeah, just try a little bit. Mm. You licked the hell out of it. 
Oh, I can smell the vinegar. Vinegar and juicy. Might as well be like a pimento olive. Yeah, it kind of does taste like an olive. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, good thing I only got three because this is hella strong. You know, they say the more sour, the probably better for your health it is. This tastes real healthy. Oh, whew. man, I think one of those babies in, in the icy would like just change the flavor entirely. And I think it's sour. This thing puts warheads to shame. Like, what is Warhead? They should just sell that in candy stores if you guys like sour candy. You want to open this one or no? Um, I'm okay. Lemon peel is lemon peel. It's really good. You guys know what lemon peel is. We'll just show it to you. There you go. For y'all that don't, it's the preserved lemon strips. Oh, actually, it's not strips, right? That's This one's strips. Oh, yeah, that one is in strips. But they have it in, like, whole lemon rinds, too. I was so tempted to get um, what Crystal was mentioning, a lot of like people that, you know, for games, football games or tailgating, poo-poos like that, they buy this like whole like sliced lemons that's preserved with sugar and chili powder and oh man, she gave us one to try, it's so good. Like you don't think it's good, it sounds weird, but it really works out. It's almost like a palate cleanser. I can imagine like sipping a Corona and taking a bite of that. Oh. My tongue is, I don't know, sour tongue. So I can't really like, feel anything. It made my tongue like swell from all the oh. sour vinegary. Man, yeah. My favorite is the lemon peel and the... This is my favorite. Yeah, that's actually pretty good too. We're definitely going to be bad. But yeah, I feel like guys, check out Honolulu Crack. Oh, what? <laughs> Honolulu yeah. Crack. <laughs> yeah, guys, check out Honolulu Crack Seed. If it's, especially if it's your first time. It's not intimidating, you know, you don't have to worry about going to the old Chinese mom and pop stores, that language barrier and not sure what to get, you know, like the staff here at Honolulu Crack Seed is super friendly, super nice. They'll help you out, you know, or just tell them what kind of flavors you're interested in. Like not too sour, but kind of something sweet. Got that covered. And also guys, if you're in the town area, like Ala Moana, Don Quixote, Kaheka, you know, Keamoku area, Makiki. Keamoku area. If you're near like Waikiki, this is really, really close. It's literally on King Street. It's in between, it's in between Kaheka <laughs> and Keamoku, but on the left hand side if you're going down King Street. What? I'm gonna find out what lane this is. Okay, he's gonna go find out what lane this is. But also, Krista was mentioning that they opened this crack seed store because there's not many crack seed stores in town other than like Chinatown or maybe the closest one might be like Kaimuki. This one is in town. It's also a, a dying business, a dying niche market kind of thing. It's kind of like our generation, the younger generation, giving a revival to an old school tradition, an old school candy store. Honestly, there are the days where we're craving it, but it's far, or we want to try it, but it's far, or we just miss that, that flavors. Like they had Hall Flakes here, they had that, that prune thing wrap that I used to always get as a kid. Unpopular opinion, because not a lot of kids like that. And let us know in the comments if you guys saw any like nostalgic childhood favorites in the Crack Seed store, let us know. Write it down in the comments because we're super interested to hear, you know, like Hall Flakes or Lemon Peel. This was literally my mom's favorite. So what did you grow know. up eating? Yeah. What did you guys grow up eating? What is a local favorite from where you're from? What excites you when you walk into a candy store? Because <laughs> Crack Seed Store is like us Asians candy store. Pretty much. But yeah, the street is Kaheka, guys. Oh my goodness. Why didn't we know that? Oh, I did say it's between Kaheka and Akemuku. It is Ka on Kaheka. This is Kaheka. Oh, this is the one-way part of Koheka, I guess. Like the ending of Koheka. Oh, where it intersects Young Street, you know? Man, guys, that was a lot of sour faces, a lot of ices, <laughs> a lot of prime rib. Thank you guys so much for coming along with us on today's food adventure. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you like this type of content where we go and get local food, local grinds, and local desserts, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out and we really wanna grow our channel and grow with you guys. So hit that subscribe button, tell your friends and family about Amanda and Felix Eats because we wanna show you all of the Ono grinds of Oahu. And until the next one, y'all. See you guys on the next one. Peace Bye, out. Guys.